So before we start doing all of those exciting things, let's first learn how to handle string kind of data in R. Right? So we have encountered string data in R earlier, but we have not really paid any attention to how to process string data, how to handle strings. So that's what we're going to do first. So let's learn some basics. Now, uh, there's a package called Tidyverse, which we have been using so far. Uh, we're going to use Tidyverse extensively, which is, uh, you know, deep layer and uh, relational data, all of those things we're going to use quite extensively. So let's go ahead and load Tidyverse. And then there's another package called StringR, which is actually installed when you install Tidyverse. But when you load the Tidyverse package, StringR is not actually loaded automatically. So you can go ahead and load that with library string R. Okay, so th that's also done. Uh, if not, if uh, you run into any problems here, just install that package, install dot package string R and do library string R. Now string R is the package that we are going to be focusing on uh, for the next, uh, for at least the whole of this week's uh, topics. Okay, string R is a package that contains a number of string processing functions. Now, uh, by default, the R package already comes with certain string processing functions. Okay, so uh, strictly speaking, you don't need to load string R uh, in the sense to do string processing, but the function names are fairly inconsistent in the base R package. String R provides a very consistent interface to string processing, and I strongly recommend that we use string R for string processing. Okay, all the function names begin with str underscore, right? So uh, there's a certain degree of consistency with uh, string processing functions and string R. So we'll be using string R for all of our string processing. Okay, so let's go right ahead and start using string R. Uh, so we can do, uh, here I'm just creating a string. String one is, this is a string. And, uh, you know, string can be enclosed either in double quotes or in single quotes. Right, so you're using the first string is one with double quotes, the second string is one with uh, single quotes, uh, but you can embed strings within others, not embed strings, but embed, so if you want to put the quote character itself within a string, you can do that by putting a double quote inside single quotes, okay, so in that case, these double quote characters that you see here would be just treated as characters and not as d defining a particular string, because the main string here is in single quotes or alternately you could put your main string in single double quotes and embed single quotes inside okay so that's that's one way to embed quotes within strings okay uh, so of course sometimes uh, you may want to include both types of quotes within a string right so you may have main string and double quotes but you may want to put single quotes or double quotes inside the string in that case if you want to include the actual quote character you can put backslash double quote or backslash single quote. Okay, so that also you could do. If you want to include the quote character itself, you can include the backslash and then put the quote character. That'll work. Okay, and then these kinds of things in programming languages, they are called escape characters. Right, that is a particular character has a certain meaning when it's normally used. If you want to change the meaning and say, look, forget that new interpretation for that character that you have and simply use the character, then you put a backslash to escape it, right? So this is what I was saying earlier, you could use a single quote or a double quote. So normally double quote means, you know, a string delimiter. But if you say, no, I don't want that, I just want to use double quote as a double quote within a string, then you put backslash double quote or you put backslash single quote for a single quote. Okay, so here uh, we are just creating this. Uh, string uh, x is the uh, the vector c consisting of one single quote character and here we want to include just the backslash character itself for its own sake right now backslash has a meaning of being the escape character but if you want to say forget it i just want to use it as it is then you put a double backslash so if you do right lines x uh, right lines uh, essentially when you do right lines on a vector it it basically prints the contents of the vector. So if you run this, you will be able to see this. Okay. Of course, you can also use, for example, suppose you want to output, uh, put the value, uh, the character mu, the Greek character mu into a string, right? Of course, the Greek character mu does not appear on our keyboards, but you can put it by using its Unicode 
for this. So for example, the Unicode for the Greek character mu is backslash u 0 b 5 right? So if you put this and then you print out the character x, you'll see that it contains the character Greek character mu. Okay, so that's the Unicode character for this. So you can look at some other functions like for example we create a vector c123 and then a string length so that's just a function to create a vector we already know this uh, to find the length of a string you can do str underscore length and then we give it a vector uh, consisting of three elements one is the character a the other is the string r for data science and the th third is a missing value in a then what we'll get back is a vector of lengths of those strings so the result would be a vector consisting of the value 1 and then the length of this particular string I don't know what that is and then followed by an NA right because when you have an NA you apply any function on it the result is NA because it's unknown right so we don't know the length we don't know this value so obviously we don't know its length as well so that's what is going to happen uh, you can use the function str underscore c for combining strings so for example if you have two strings str underscore c and the string x and the string y, the result is going to be the string x, y. Or if you do, uh, and of course the arguments for str underscore c are two strings. Uh, if you do str underscore c here and you give three arguments, x, y, and z, all of them are strings. Notice that they are all enclosed in double quotes. You could do it in single quotes as well. Uh, then the result once again is a concatenation of all of them. You can also, in this case, by default, str underscore c does not put any character in between the strings that it's appending. It just simply smushes them together. And many times that's really what we want when you're combining strings. But if for whatever reason you want some particular separating character to, uh, to some character to use as the separator between the strings, like here, for example, we are saying strc, that is combine the two strings x and y, but use a separator comma space right so that means when it's combining them it'll put the comma space separator in place so you'll get the result x comma space y now incidentally these what you're putting in here can be any strings it doesn't have to be one character my example just had one character so this string could have been uh, john and this string could have been uh, mcenroe so the result would have been john mcenroe with no space or uh, you could have said strc uh, the first string might be let's say McEnroe, second string may be John, and separated as comma, as comma space. So then the result you'll get is McEnroe comma space John. Right. So it's possible that these are uh, strings with more than one character. It's also possible that these are empty strings in some situations. Okay. So if you have X is uh, itself a collection. Okay, and then if you do strc, and then here we are just, you know, prepending and appending a dash, uh, a vertical bar dash and dash vertical bar, right? So if you do this, then uh, it's going to do, uh, so when you have a vector and you put that as an argument in string c, right? And then, so here, you, what you're doing is we want to give two strings to concatenate, okay? And uh, two strings, in this uh, vector and we are doing strc with this is a vector and this is just individual so what we really want is for every element of this vector put before it a dash underscore uh, a dash hyphen and after it a hyphen dash so it takes the first element which is abc and does what we want it to do the second element is na which is missing so it doesn't perform any operation on it it simply returns na as it is Right? because it's a missing value we don't know what's going to be the result of doing this okay so that's again just showing you how this works now notice the difference between how when you give two strings as arguments to strc it concatenates them whereas if you provide a vector with two strings now that's different from giving it two strings because this is just one vector that you're giving it okay and in fact you're giving it a vector and possibly usually another vector right so in that case it's going to operate element by element as we already know with numerical vectors 
Okay, but in this case, the example we showed was one, one of the vectors was actually an A. So it simply didn't do anything with that. Okay, uh, so it's going to uh, basically operate on this, on the vector. Okay, uh, so if you wanted to convert this NA to an actual string called NA, then you can use str underscore replace underscore NA of X. Then whenever it sees NA, it's going to convert that literally to the string NA. And that's the result you're seeing here. Okay, so these are just things that you, you should keep in mind, not things that we'll be using very often. Okay, so here the argument is two strings which get concatenated. Here the arguments is, uh, uh, argument is one vector. And of course, it's one vector consisting of two elements. Usually both would have been strings, but in this case, one is a missing value. Okay, so here we are just showing you that uh, if a string returns null, then it happily ignores that, right? So sometimes the, the, this is just an example that showed that. So strings of length zero are quietly ignored. That's what this example is saying. Not very significant. You can read this slide later. So here we are seeing three strings, a vector of three strings, right? So if you just do strc of s, then obviously what we, we know that whenever we pass a vector to a function, it is simply going to operate on each element separately. So this is like saying strc abc, strc xyz, strc pqr. It's like doing that three separate times. And of course, to strc, if you give it just one string, then there's really nothing for it to do. Right? Because strc requires at least two strings for you to be able to combine them together. If you give it just one string, then nothing happens. So that's what we are doing here, right? We are giving it three, a vector of three strings and it's going to operate on each one separately. So it's like doing strc separately on each of them. Therefore, the result is going to be simply this, right? The same as the input because it first does strc of abc, it gets abc. strc of xyz gets xyz. strc of pqr gets pqr. So really that's not very useful. But there are many occasions when you're given a vector of strings and what you want to do is to combine all of them into one single string. Okay, that is something we want to do very often. You can do that with strc by using the collapse option. So when you say strc s, s is being this vector, and when you say collapse it, okay, so you're saying collapse it and use the null character, the empty string, as the collapsing character, then what it's going to do is it's going to take A, B, C, X, Y, Z, P, Q, R, you know, jam them together. So the result is going to be this. And it didn't put anything in between the jamming, uh, between the individual strings, because we said collapse equals the empty string. Now, if we could have said collapse equals space, collapse equals comma, collapse equals semicolon, then it would have put that particular character in between. Right, so for example, here we are showing collapse equals comma, space. So in that case, you'll get ABC comma, space, XYZ comma, space, PQR. Okay, so that's the difference between giving STR, uh, STRC, you can give it a number of strings independently, not within a vector, then it will combine all of them together. But if you give it a vector, then it's going to operate on each element of the vector separately. Okay, but if you want all the elements of the vector to be combined, then you can use the collapse option. 